early 60s started in 67, and girls just decided they didn't want to look like their mothers, they didn't want the life of their mother, and they didn't want, you know, to wear stuff because a bunch of fashion magazines told them that's where the hemlines were, or this was right. We had, our parents had gotten enough leisure to give us enough leisure to be able to start to think for ourselves. So that's that and the fact that half of America was under 25, which is another part of the 60s, sort of just blew the walls out of everything. And uh, we stopped wearing bras, I stopped wearing girdles. I mean, I thought it was kind of dumb for an 18, 19 year old to be wearing a girdle. It hurt, felt bad, and I had a fine butt, thank you. You know, Vogue was basically still in the 50s. It needed to be blasted out. Deanna Vreeland, I think when she saw me, uh, sort of shortish and funny face with a gap tooth and straight hair and very little makeup saw that I looked like those new strange girls she was seeing on the streets that didn't look like her models and uh, that's when she yanked the fashion world up at that time and uh, I mean she started making it like what was happening these young girls that were being comfortable and not being harassed up on the streets. All I owned, I owned one dress to go on go with for about a year, which I would wool light on the weekends, and uh, the rest of the time I was in jeans and, and t-shirts. I was not the average, everyday six-foot supermodel. I really wasn't. What was different for me and the girls that were in is I went into Breland's office to model for those girls that couldn't come in because they were too busy taking pictures with Penn and Avedon. And uh, so they hired us little non-starters non to go in. And I think I was different because I looked like the girls that were in the streets. I hadn't done anything to my hair. I wasn't wearing a bra. I wasn't wearing a girdle. I was short. I had a gap in my teeth. I had a funny round nose. I, uh, and I was very curious. And it was so extraordinary what was going on in this uh, electric red room everywhere, which I had never seen one of those either. Um, I think, I think I was just representative of my time, and I wasn't trying to be representative of fashion. I was representative of my, my time. By the 70s, we were starting disco horror in the mid-70s. Speed had hit the streets instead of grass. Uh, cocaine was coming, and Working women were a known fact that everyone had to deal with. Nixon got in and I went out and bought a three-piece flannel suit. I bagged my jeans. I still owned only, I was now a star model, and I still only had jeans, and I, I had maybe two Jock Tifos now that he'd give me. Uh, and maybe one Halston that, that uh, Halston gave me. And uh, the whole world just sort of squared up, and everybody got a little more conservative, or a lot more conservative. What Halston did was he was the first person that I saw to rip the structure out of clothes. You no longer, which is what young girls, we didn't wear structure in our clothes anywhere. We barely wore underwear unless we were going to get into bed. You know, he started making things to fit young athletic bodies that didn't, where everything wasn't hidden. And, uh, and certainly Calvin kept doing that and lots of people did that. And, and Giorgio started making good business suits for women that were feminine and didn't look like they were, you know, made at a gorilla factory. And uh, everything just sort of changed. Then American fashion was starting to establish the fact that it was more practical and more, slightly more durable and would hold a little longer and was more valuable for the money. Gloria, Gloria Vanderbilt, put her name on a pair of jeans. So suddenly you could take something for very little money, stick it on something for not much money, and it was designer. And you didn't have to go to Paris. You didn't even have to get a designer from New York. It was like this sort of magic ridiculousness. And uh, that spread into basically everything. One of my great all times, I guess the number one, was uh, white go-go boots. White go-go boots were, I'd say, 63, 64. One of the major low points uh, 
for anybody under six feet tall or wear bell bottoms and are bell bottoms because it makes you look much shorter. It squashes you down, makes you wide in the bottom, wide in the top. So you look phew, like that, it squares you. So if you're over six feet, it's fabulous, but most of us aren't, and I particularly wasn't. Um, uh, clogs, what are they called? Platforms. Yeah, they were clogs, but they were called platforms. These fine kind of boot things that were about like that, they come back every once in a while, it's very funny. This, you know, it's endless.